Welcome to Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies, where we make innovation work through simulation, product development, and rapid prototyping. As an ANSYS channel partner, we sell and support products from ANSYS Inc. in the Four Corner States and Nevada. In addition, we provide consulting and training in ANSYS tools worldwide. These tools provide simulation capabilities in fluid dynamics, structural mechanics, electromagnetics, as well as systems and multiphysics applications. Hey guys, this is Manoj with PADT. In today's focus video blog, I'm going to show you a quick example of using Design Explorer to optimize the design for a particular goal. So as you can see here, I have a tuning fork, pretty standard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary the height of my tuning fork. Now I'm in SOLIDWORKS right now, um, and to make the dimension a parameter, what I need to do is come into my sketch in SOLIDWORKS, or any other CAD package for that matter, and change the name of the dimension by giving it a DS prefix. With this prefix, ANSYS will be able to bring in the dimension as a parameter that can be used in the DX study. Okay, so once that's done, we can go ahead and save, and then open up ANSYS Workbench from the toolbar at the top. Now while that's loading, essentially the goal of the analysis is going to be uh, to vary the height of the tuning fork until we achieve a frequency of 440 hertz, uh, which corresponds to the standard concert pitch A, uh, which is used for tuning musical instruments today. So once Workbench opens up, it'll attach the geometry file into a component cell. Then what we can do is we can drag a modal analysis right on top of the geometry and then we can go ahead and go into the setup. Now the first goal of the analysis is going to be to run uh, a standard modal analysis without any parameterization so we can see which mode that we are interested in. Uh, for a tuning fork we want to look at the fundamental modes uh, where the two prongs of the tuning fork are moving symmetrically with, res with respect to each other so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a fix support on the handle. We're going to tell uh, this analysis to only look for three modes because we're pretty confident that the fundamental mode is going to be one of the first three. After that we can just simply run. It's going to mesh first with a default mesh. That's perfectly fine for this and then it's going to run the modal analysis and identify those three mode shapes. We're going to want to look at the modal uh, mode shapes uh, deformation plots so we can see which one corresponds to the one we're interested in. And then we can move on to the parameterization portion. This should only take a few seconds. So once that's done we can go under solution and you will see that this created three frequencies for us. To get the mode shapes, we can just highlight these three frequencies. We can right click and go to create mode shape results. And it's created some deformation plots for us. Then we can right click and say evaluate all the results. And then we can look at the deformation plots and animate them. So that's not the fundamental mode that we want, but this is. This is the fundamental mode shape for a tuning fork. And so this is the mode that we need the frequency of 440 hertz to be in. So, now we're going to go on to the parameterization now that we've identified which mode shape we're interested in. The first thing is, if you go under the geometry, under your part, you'll see that ANSYS has brought in some CAD parameters, which he defined as that DS prefix. So to parameterize that in ANSYS, all you have to do is click this little checkbox here, and it'll give you a little P icon. And as far as the output goes, the output parameter is the frequency. So under deformation, if you go under information, we can also parameterize the frequency. So now we have one input and one output parameter. Now we can go ahead and close mechanical. And now you see that a new parameter option has showed up. Now with Design Explorer, we're going to do a direct optimization method since we're looking for a specific goal to meet. So we're just going to drag this direct optimization right here. And we're going to go ahead and go to the optimization toolbox. So, as you can see here, it has some objectives, constraints. So the first thing we're going to do is identify a lower and upper bound for a parameter, in which case it's the height of that tuning fork. 
So we're going to go from uh, 10 millimeters up to 140. So that's a wide range uh, for the tuning fork to go. For the optimization method, uh, we're going to change it from the default of screening to adaptive single objective. With that, what it's going to do is going to start off with three initial samples and then kind of converge uh, as it's needed um, to that goal criteria. Of course, we need to set our goal. So we're going to go into objectives and constraints, select our frequency parameter, and we're going to say the objective is to seek a target of 440 hertz. As you can see, there's other goals. You can minimize or maximize the values, but in this case, we're going to go seek target. So we've defined our parameter lower and upper bound. We've defined our goal. And simply put, we can just go ahead and right click and update. What you'll see is, is Design Explorer will create three initial samples of varying uh, dimension. And once it runs those, it'll calculate the next one based on the results of those and try to converge upon a solution. Uh, this may take a few minutes, um, so I will stop the video here uh, um, while it's running, and then I'll come back with the results. The one thing to notice is when you go back to SOLIDWORKS, you'll notice that my original tuning fork has changed. It's because ANSYS has pushed that new dimension, this first dimension of 50 millimeters back to SOLIDWORKS to recreate the geometry and import it back in. And it's going to do that every time um, that it needs to update the geometry. But that's all automated in the back end. So I'll be back once this is done. OK, that took about 10 minutes to complete. But now when we see here to the right, you'll see that ANSYS has given us a candidate point. Uh, it's given us a three-star rating system. ANSYS rates candidate points from zero to three stars. And so we see that in this case, it has chosen a dimension of 80.001 millimeters for the height of my tuning fork, uh, which achieved a frequency of the second mode shape of 439.83 hertz. When we look at the raw optimization data, you'll see that it started off with those three initial values and then kind of went back and forth a little bit until it converged right around 80. Uh, and it took about 26 different uh, cases for it to finally decide that it's fully converged. And you can see that by looking at the goal plot, you'll see that the goal criteria quickly converged after about seven or eight iterations. Um, and then it kind of fine tuned it a little bit more. But essentially, there you have it. We had one parameter, which was our dimension of our tuning fork, and we were trying to achieve a particular goal. So we essentially, we created an input and an output parameter, told DX what the upper and lower bound of my input parameter was, what my target was for my output parameter, and with the adaptive single objective method, uh, DX went ahead and calculated all the parameters for you automatically until it converged upon a solution. There are quite a lot more that DX can do, uh, which we'll get to in future videos. But hopefully this just gives a glimpse on how a DX can be used to optimize a design for a particular goal or criteria. We hope this video was useful, and please subscribe to PADT as we will be doing more videos on tips and examples in ANSYS. If you have any questions, feel free to call PADT Inc. Otherwise, see you next time.